Hello friends, this video on NEAT Ecology is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us discuss the various stages of hydrocery. Now what is hydrocery? In fact, first let's understand what is siri. Why do we use the term siri? Now siri refers to the succession of development of biotic succession, the stages of development of biotic succession from the pioneer stage to the climax community. Like when the first living organisms starts to develop in a damaged ecosystem. So from there till a stable ecosystem. So all the stages that come between these two stages from the pioneer stage to the climax community, all of these stages are is given the term Siri. Now, when what is hydrocery? Hydro is water. So the succession in water is known as hydrat succession. And the stages of development of hydrax succession collectively is known as hydrocery. So here we are going to talk about the various stages of hydrocery. So what would be the first stage? So first stage would always be the pioneer stage. That is the first life forms which develop in uh, the ecosystem. So here in case of hydrocery, the, the first stage or the pioneer stage would be the phytoplanktons. So what are phytoplanktons? They are very small autotrophic uh, organisms. Now as we all know that most of the time the, uh, the pioneer species are the photosynthetic species. So these phytoplanktons are also photosynthetic. So they are able to prepare their own food. Right? So some examples of phytoplanktons are diatoms and dinoflagellates. So these are autotrophic organisms. Now spores of these organisms reach the water body either by wind or by and that's how it gets spread to other parts and as a result they multiply rapidly and this mul rapid multiplication later give rise to another category of planktons called the zooplanktons. Now the zooplanktons are not autotrophic. The zooplanktons basically feed on the phytoplanktons. So the first stage is called plankton stage because in this stage we have the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons. Now when these planktons die, what happens? With the death of the planktons, the lower layer of the soil is enriched with organic matter which becomes favorable for the growth of the next stage. So when these organisms die, the soil is enriched with organic matter that enables the growth of the next stage. And what is the next stage? The next stage is submerged stage. So in this stage, the soft mud, like the mud enriched with organic matter, that soft mud favors the growth of submerged plants. Now submerged plants like some of the examples of submerged plants would be hydrilla, nages, so these are examples of submerged plants. Now it's these type of plants, they are rooted in mud but form a dense growth. Now with, with as the stages progress, the bottom level slowly rises up. So if you see here, so, so the planktons maybe were at the very much bottom level. So now gradually with the formation of the soil at the lower uh, stage or the lower layer, the bottom level will gradually start to rise up. Now the next stage would be the floating stage. So in this stage, floating leaved plants are seen in areas with shallow water. Like some of the examples of such plants would be Lemna, Wolfia, Azola, Icornia. So these are examples of the plants with floating leaves. Now these kind of plants they cover the water completely because they, since they have floating leaves they are basically floating uh, plants like here if you see these are the this is the floating stage so the entire surface of water gets covered with these kind of plants and what do these plants do these plants also enrich the water with minerals and organic matter now the more minerals and more organic matter are present in water it becomes more favorable for the growth of further organisms and with this 
comes the next stage which is the reed swamp stage in reed swamp stage amphibious plants grow and they transpire huge amount of water what what are amphibious plants now amphibious is nothing but those which can survive both in plant, land as well as water now some of the examples of amphibious plants would be typha scorpus sagittaria so these are all examples of amphibious plants so these plants are seen in this stage and these plants also transpire huge amount of water now after the reed swamp stage comes the marsh meadow stage now in this stage what what is seen more so in this stage grasses and herbs are seen that is small sized plants so now we are no more talking about the floating plants we are talking about plants which are slightly above the sur on the surface of the soil like uh, uh, the small plants herbs or the grasses so they are seen more so in this stage we see grasses herbs like polygonum caltha so these are the herbs which are seen here now these herbs they add abundant humus to the soil therefore the soil is built up to invite the next stage now the soil has so much of humus which increases the fertility of the soil now what are you observing with each stage so we started with the plankton stage when we had very tiny autotrophic organisms at uh, at the lowermost layer at in the water so inside the water we had the planktons then we came up with the submerged stage where the plants were under the water then we came up with the floating leaf plants so the plants were on the surface of water then we came up with amphibious where the plants could survive both on land and water now we came up with grasses and herbs where they can survive on land so you see gradually like if you look at this picture you see gradually we started with the plants which were come totally under the water and then gradually the level is rising up so then gradually it came on the surface of water then it came on the surface of the soil so the soil is like the topmost surface and you have small grasses and herbs so what do you expect to be the next stage after marsh meadow stage so the next stage was the woodland stage where you have shrubs so shrubs are the medium sized plants and shrubs can tolerate quite bright sunlight and also water logged conditions like the plants which we have in our houses they are the shrubs like the rose plant so they can tolerate i mean good sunlight at the same time we also water the plants regularly so some of the examples of the shrubs which were seen in the woodland stage were bogwood button brush cotton wood so these were some of the uh, shrubs which were seen in the woodland stage why was this called woodland stage because the shrubs have you know woody stems because of which it was called the woodland stage now what do you think would be the next stage so you see gradually from grasses and herbs we came to shrubs so obviously now we are going to come to even bigger plants so then was the last stage which was the climax forest where we have huge trees so these trees will grow to greater heights and forest type what the type of forest that would finally uh, happen or finally exist would depend on the climate of that area and that is why the stage is called climax forest because the forest type depends on the climate of that area now some of the uh, trees which see in, which we see in this stage are oak spruce fir elm so these are some of the trees seen here now the type of forest could be a rain forest in moist areas the type of the forest could be deciduous forest in case of temperate areas so what we see is in case of uh, in case of hydrosphere the stages start with the plankton stage which was completely under water gradually it moves to uh, the submerged stage then to the floating stage finally to the reed swamp stage marsh meadow stage where you have grasses and herbs then the woodland stage with shrubs and finally the climax forest with huge trees so these were the various stages of hydrosphere now uh, as far as hydrosphere is concerned do remember uh, names of examples of plants which you see in each of these stages so you should remember the category of plants which you see at each stages and also examples of, of few plants that belongs to that category thank you
you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.